Hello there, and welcome to this episode of the My Poetry Readings podcast, with me, your host, Declan Walsh. And in each episode, we revisit some of the poetry that may have been part of our lives, and perhaps also discover some new poems along the way. In this week's episode, we're going to look at The Lake Isle of Inish Free by William Butler Yeats. William Butler Yeats, or more commonly known as W.B. Yeats, was actually born in Dublin in 1865 and is widely regarded as one of the finest poets on both the national and international stage. A pillar of the Irish literary establishment, he is one of the co-founders of the Abbey Theatre and in his later years served two terms as Senator of the Irish Free State from 1922 and was a driving force behind the literary revival in the early 20th century. And while he lived in several places, including Dublin, London, Galway and France, his early and formative years were spent in Sligo, which he has always regarded as his spiritual home. He died in France, aged 73, in 1939, and was later buried in Drumcliff Churchyard in County Sligo where the now famous epitaph, cast a cold eye on life, on death, horseman passed by, is carved on his gravestone. Yeats wrote poetry, of course, prose and plays, and his early works were focused mainly on interpreting Irish legends and his own personal spiritual beliefs, many of which were influenced by the people and places of Sligo. Later in his life, after around 1910, his work took a turn becoming more experimental and poetical. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1923, and even then Sligo was not too far from his thoughts. It's actually said that while he was in the Royal Palace in Stockholm when receiving his award, Yeats commented that the palace reminded him of the Ulster Bank building in Sligo. And there is now a beautiful sculpture of W.B. Yeats by Ronan Gillespie in front of the Ulster Bank in Sligo on the corner of Stephen Street and Markovich Road, which is only across the river from the Yeats Memorial Building, home to the Yeats Society and the Yeats Summer School, which is now in its 62nd year this year. And if you're ever around Dublin with a little bit of time to spare, you should check out the newly restored W.B. Yeats Memorial Garden in St. Stephen's Green. And yet another beautiful sculpture by Henry Moore sits in the middle of the garden. The Lake Isle of Inish Free is regarded as W.B. Yeats's first great poems. For those who may not be aware, the Isle of Inish Free is one of about 20 uninhabited islands on Loch Hill, a lake on the eastern side of Sligo, connected to the sea by the Garavogue River, which runs through the heart of Sligo town. Yeats described the inspiration for the poem coming from a sudden memory of his childhood while walking down Fleet Street in London as a young 23-year-old, quite homesick in 1888. And looking through a shop window, the sound of a little trickle of water from a miniature fountain reminded him of lake water. It was first published in the National Observer in 1890 and featured in Yeats's second book of poems, The Rose, in 1893. The poem conjures up a longing to go back to nature and even perhaps a more self-sufficient life and examines the themes of nature, peace, wisdom and truth. And written over 130 years ago, it appears to be more relevant today than ever. But, of course, we will let you make up your own interpretation and mind on that one. The Lake Isle of Inish Free by William Butler Yeats I will arise and go now, and go to Inish Free, and a small cabin build there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honey bee, and live alone in the bee loud glade. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow. 
dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. Their midnights all a glimmer, and noon a purple glow, an evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore. While I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey, I hear it in the deep heart's core. There have been many, many musical interpretations. And from their album, An Appointment of Mystery Yates, here's Mike Scott and the Water Boys with a slightly different version. I will arise and go now And go to Inish Free Nine bean rows will I have there And a hive for the honeybee And a small cabin Certainly a different version from Mike Scott. And for something a little bit different, here is a gorgeous choral version from Invocations album by Anuna. And that was Anuna with their version of The Lake Isle of Inish Free. Well, we're coming to the end of this episode of My Poetry Readings, and I really hope you enjoy the reading of The Lake Isle of Inish Free. And if so, please subscribe to My Poetry Readings on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or indeed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you think anybody else would like to join us on this journey, please share it with them also. You can also follow the podcast on our Facebook page and YouTube channel at My Poetry Readings. And links to all the social media platforms are included in the show notes below. I would be absolutely delighted to hear any feedbacks and comments that you may have, and indeed any suggestions that you may have for a future reading. Now, I'm off to sharpen the quill for the next episode. Till next time, Slongo Fall. <laughs>